Hi, I'm Cindy Walter. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. Are you ready for a fashion extravaganza? On today's show we'll learn how to make this vest and a vest with an oriental flair. We'll have a bit of a fashion show and have lots of fun updating our wardrobe with the bleach denim look. Make sure your teenagers are watching because this show will be for everyone. So enjoy the show. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 Quilting Machines, precision quilting machines. A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company. Krause Publications. Millican and Company. The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Janie Donaldson and Cindy Walter. Quilt Central gets a lot of requests and they ask, who makes Janie Donaldson's vests? Where does the pattern come from? Well, today we have with us Lorraine Torrance and she is the designer. She's also a teacher and pattern maker. Welcome, Lorraine. Thank you, Janie. It's nice to be here. Well, we're going to, we have a lot to show, so we're going to kind of speed through things. Okay. But this is the same vest. This is the panel play vest that Janie wears a lot. Here's one with Seminole patchwork. You can fill this panel any way you want to. It has a yoke on the back. Here's one of simple plaid flannel. Very much more casual, but still the same pattern. Could wear that with a blue jeans. Sure. Here's another one with hand-dyed silk in the panel with fusible uh, metallic bias tape covering the curvy, curvy lines. Isn't that beautiful? Looks more festive for the holiday season. Same pattern and look how evening this is. This is um, one with silk noil and vintage Japanese kimono fabric in the panel. And Lorraine has a knack for picking just the right button. I love buttons. <laughs> okay, this one. Here is a denim one with uh, simple strips of chambray in the panel. Beautiful very, little autumn leaf yes, buttons. Yes, and very casual. And another one with the same piecing, just simple half inch strips, but this one done in hand dyed silk. I love the silk. Here's the back on that one. And um, simple squares of plaid um, arranged in the yoke. Um, and, and the panel uh, makes a simple... And you have a jacket with the yes. panel in front. I love mm -hmm. the panel because it's easy to fit just by sliding the buttons over or sure, in and out. Sure, it's asymmetrical. Right. This is uh, another pattern with the same idea, the panel plate jacket. This one is hand dyed silk with vintage kimono fabrics. And the jacket is, has batting and quilting and a pocket. This one I've worn and I love it because it is lightweight and so warm. Here's another panel play jacket with uh, hand dyed silk with the curvy design in the, in the panel. And the, the quilting is the same, curvy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the third pattern in this panel play series. This is the panel play tunic for women who like the vest but want a longer length to cover to their the hips. hips. <laughs> And the back. And again, this is hand dyed silk. Bringing the attention up towards the top. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing. You can also, also make these vests with a single fabric in the panels, like the ones Janie and I are wearing. I'm going to wearing. show these real quick. We're going to get through these real quick. We can give them an idea. This one's very slimming because the yes. color goes down the middle. This is the slim shape vest. And the back. Mm -hmm. I love these. And another one with uh, cotton. Green and orange, yes. a little fall tone. That stripe down the back sure does make you look a little taller. I could yeah. use that. This is the tablecloth shirt pattern designed to make from a tablecloth with a border. 
but you can make it out of fabric and put your own border on it too. I think those old collector pieces are great. This is the, another uh, slim shape vest. This one with uh, a jacket, slim shape vest jacket. This has the sleeve in yeah. it. Good place to use up little pieces of leftover quilt. Sure. And you can you fill up that panel however you like. This one? Oh, this is the gorgeous. Japanese jewels vest, a long vest with piecing in the panels. This one does Long lines. Long lines down the seams. This one. Oh, I love the, this one. This is a short version of the long and short of it, a, a little jacket pattern that's reversible. Oh. Uh, and this one um, Great. has no piecing on it, and this is the same pattern with with piecing. Very elegant in silk. Silk du peony, yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Don't you just love that? Okay, now you want to show us a little bit about how you get those patterns to fit a little bit better. Um, we're, we're going to look at the panel play vest, the one that Janie and I are both wearing. This is made on a muslin foundation. Um, and this is a good excuse to, um, not a good excuse, a good opportunity to fit the pattern to you because since it's made on the muslin foundation, you can base that muslin together and fit it on yourself first. And you should. And you should. Because then it will fit so much better, you'll be so much happier, and you can reuse it and reuse it. Sure. So I've sewn the front and back together at the right shoulder, and I've traced the design lines onto the muslin and cut out my panel in one piece. This is a piece of beautiful hand-dyed cotton. That is gorgeous. It's so nice because you can lay the color out and get it, place it exactly where you want it. Sure, and, and it's actually built on this foundation. And after you have placed all the pieces where they belong. You construct your panel border and place it all around. all around in place. And I noticed you you love to top stitch. Well, sure, that's the way I Part put the these on. It. Yep. And you can add other kinds of embellishment. Um, since this is just one panel, you could do a lot of decorative stitching in here. And if you wanted to jazz it up a little bit, you could add a little trim sticking out. Of course, you know I'm going to like that because That's it's why I made pink. it in your size, Janie. Because <laughs> <laughs> <I'll do it. laughs> it's pink. And these pieces can just overlap. Like beautiful, that. beautiful, beautiful. And you can audition buttons. I would probably put some buttons that would match that pink. And it would look wonderful on you, Janie. Well, I always <laughs> think that everybody should have one of these. They're so easy to put together, and you can reuse them, and they're slimming, and you don't whack up your patchwork, and you don't have to worry about darts or a whole lot of things. So <laughs> I think they're the best design I've ever seen. Oh, well, thank you. So thank, thank you. you so much for showing us this. You're welcome. I've enjoyed it. We just saw one beautiful type of vest, and now Cynthia Scott's back with us this week to show us another style. Hi, welcome. Hi, Cindy. Well, today we're doing a Pieces of the Orient, Oriental style vest, okay. and it's foundation pieced um, onto a muslin base um, with a variety of fabrics. Well, let's look at some of the fabrics you're using. My goodness, you have all types. No wonder you need to have it on a muslin base then. Absolutely. We've got um, bridal fabrics, um, fashion fabrics, even some home deck fabrics are worked into this vest. That's a great way to use up scraps. Though, Absolutely. Maybe. Well, do you need to stabilize some of these lighter fabrics even more? Yes, you do. Um, especially when you're decorative stitching, you do need a, a tearaway stabilizer underneath. Or, if you have an especially light fabric, um, you can go ahead and add some trico interfacing to the back mm -hmm. that Regular makes a more uniform uh, weight of for your fabrics. That would make your vest drape better if it's all the same weight, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And so then, show us some of the decorative stitchings. What's one of your 
Oh, here, this is interesting. What type of stabilizer is this? This is a, a product that you can um, remove with your iron. Oh. So for a delicate fabric where um, you may not want to immerse it in water mm -hmm. or oh. um, tear away, um, you have this option also. What a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So one of our first stitches is, I just love this. You know I'm a hand quilter and I've taught this for so long, but this is just downright cheating. I love this. What right. is this called? Well, uh, we call this a sculpture stitch. Okay. And it's a great stitch because it allows you to give uh, the look of something that's been hand quilted. Yeah, it's great. Um, another great thing that you can do is um, we have a um, quilt bar or quilt guide that allows you to um, uh, just simply by moving this and adjusting the screw, you can evenly space your rows of stitching. It gives great you a nice idea. even look. So we'll do that right here. You mean we don't have to put masking tape on our machine anymore? <laughs> Absolutely. You <laughs> right. don't have to do that anymore. Okay. The machine has this. So we're ready to stitch. And I'm going to use the bar um, directly, uh, quilt guide, directly on the existing line of stitching. And this is adjustable to whatever uh, measurement we want. And we're ready to sew. Now, can I ask you, how does it do this? Do you have a monofilament and a dark thread? And Correct. We have a, dark, a regular um, cotton thread in our bobbin. In the bobbin, oh. And we're using a clear monofilament thread in the top. And right. what that allows us to do, um, the machine is set up so that it will automatically pull up the bobbin thread mm -hmm. and create that uh, stitch that looks like hand quilting. Yeah, the missing stitch, yeah. Yes. Great. Well, let's look at a couple other stitches then. Okay. Well, now that you've changed the thread, um, show me this type of decorative stitch. Okay, we've got another decorative stitch selected here, and again, we're going to use our quilt guide. And before you start, let me ask: Did you put the brown in the top? And, yes. And do you have do you have regular cotton thread in the bobbin, or did you put the monofilament? Actually, I'm using a mo um, a bobbin thread. Okay. Um, it's a lighter weight lighter cotton weight. thread. Okay. And again, we um, we have some stabilizer underneath because that gives us a flatter stitch. Now, can you just spray base this stabilizer on, or did you, um, you just holding it on, or spray I just, base it? I just held it on, okay. um, and that gives us our nice stitch. Boy, this is a beautiful. Is Isn't this a great? feather stitch, or a, a, it's a little chicken feet or something? What do you call that? Well, I call it turkey tracks, but I don't know if that's, <laughs> if that's the right word <laughs> for it. That's probably not the, the legal <laughs> name, but it fits it, huh? Yes. OK, that's okay. wonderful. And this is an interesting stitch in here. You must have stitched over it after you finished piecing. Correct. Okay. Well, some of the stitching can be done on the fabric prior to yeah. piecing it onto the foundation. So you're actually creating fabric. Exactly. Yeah. We're creating fabric. So um, but once we are um, uh, done sewing on the strips, we can also use the decorative stitches um, to actually quilt them to the foundation piece. Okay. So once we have all of our strips ready and lined up, uh, how do we actually put them onto our foundation? Okay. Um, we start with um, moving it over about 3 eighths of an inch. This allows a quarter of an inch seam for our 5 eighths finished garment seam on the front of front edge of the blouse. And w this is just a plain old vest pattern or an oriental vest pattern and you've made the muslin base so that's what we're following. Exactly. Okay. So we're just piecing onto it. Okay. Um, basically we're sewing it on, um, flipping the fabric over, ironing it, and then we take our next strip Lay it on top. Your foundation piecing. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Great. We have our quarter inch seam. Yep. Flip, press, okay. and then you've got your next strip. Boy, that's a great idea. It's an easy way to get it laid out nicely, and it's yes. going to be nice, flat and taut. I want to give some tips for uh, piecing to make you look slimmer. Oh, a good idea. Yes, <laughs> we all want to be slimmer. We're using uh, not batting, but the muslin, because oh, none of us need that extra the bulk. extra padding, yeah. The other thing I like to do is keep most of my st decorative stitching lines going north and south. This is more slimming. Very good idea. Um, I kept most of the light fabrics to the above the waist area of this vest, so it's drawing attention to your face. That's <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's brilliant. I also did some diagonal piecing here, again, above the waist, so we're adding visual interest where we want uh, we want the focus to be. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Then this outside piece here, 
That yeah. looks like it matched the back. Correct. What we did, once we've applied our three strips to both sides of our pattern, um, we can finish out the rest of the vest front with the matching fabric that matches the uh, back of the vest. Okay. So it's a more continuous look. And do you put the lapels on next? Yes. Um, then we're ready for our front panels. Mm -hmm. And whoops, I've got to flip that one over. And these are um, part of the pattern, this particular pattern. And this again, using the same fabric, gives a nice slimming look. So you can just, you can make a frog or buy one of the store pre-made ones. So Absolutely. It's not, it's not difficult. So you can okay. use the decorative cord if you want or, or pre, buy pre-made. Uh, okay. Do you line it now or after you put the collar and backing on? Actually, um, the, um, you would sew, the, uh, sew it to the back. We would line it. And before we would line the garment though, and use a coordinating lining. We can trim the edge with um, some piping that we can make ourselves. Um, I actually used a lightweight yarn um, for my piping because I just wanted a nice light accent. Uh, but it looks great on the collar and around the armhole edges Beautiful. of the garment. Now this must be the same pattern, and I love all the, the embroidery you did right here. Yes, this is the same pattern. You look great in that. Thank you so much. You are such a wonderful seamstress, and I really appreciate all the tips you've given us today, and I can't wait to make my own best. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay, Cindy. Today we have with us a celebrity long arm teacher with a fashion update, Sue Motes. Hi Sue. Hi Jane, it's nice to be back with you today and to bring some of the projects we were working on on the other segments. The first model is wearing the vest that we were stitching on the machine at that time. It's a actually a convenience cloth and I uh, used invisible in the needle because there were so many color changes in the fabric and then I used a rayon in the bobbin and it is reversible. We also had uh, the second model is wearing a uh, snowman vest and in it I was showing how to use two threads through the needle at the same time to get strength to the second one and um, the third one is actually a piece of fabric that we just showed that I was uh, had been quilting at the time and it has a holographic in the needle and a rayon in the bobbin and as usual I've made something that is reversible so you can wear something to work in the daytime and then switch to um, a little bit more glamorous in the evening and the next model is wearing uh, what was a, U a UFO, it's now finished. I started this several years ago, and I wanted to do a lot of intense uh, quilting on the, um, some of the fabrics, and um, I decided that once I got the long arm, I could do that very easily with putting the, the batting on and the garment pieces on top of the batting. That way you can change your uh, bobbin thread to match the top color and do your intense stitching. Then you put it all together with the uh, backing and your batting and then you finish, complete the garment. And the reversible side of uh, this particular one is um, something that you could wear in the evenings. The jacket is absolutely beautiful. Thank you for this fashion update. And we'll see you soon at the Quilt Central Retreat.
a wardrobe is with the wash denim look. So today, oh, hi Janie, how are you doing? This well, looks really I'm interesting. Do, I'm going to bleach some uh, denim or indigo denim, and I think uh, can I try? help? Yeah, put some gloves on. Great. First thing I have to do is to pour the bleach powder in my little shaker container, Oops. and then I'm going to add it water up to the line. Don't get that on you. We're working outside with our apron on. And then you put the cap on and shake that up really well. It turns purple. Yeah. Then the next thing, I'm, I've already brought out some hot water. It's just super hot tap water, completely hot tap water. And I'm going to pour the, um, the developer in this extremely hot tap water and let that sit. And now we're completely ready if that's mixed up. It's mixed Good. up. Good. Pour it in here or pour some of it in here. Yeah, we don't want to splash that on. That's great. great. Perfect. Now there's several ways to apply the bleach and one of the neatest ways I think that I've seen is by using a stencil. And so I'm going to take the bleach and pat it on, on the holes of the stencil and let it just get in there. If I had a little stencil brush too that would work. And pat it into these holes. Oh good, I can see it going down. And a little bit more here. You could really get detailed if you can keep it within the lines there. Yeah, I hope it does. It's, oh, I can see it's going to work really nicely. This is so fun because it's endless how you can create what you can do. Now I'm going to pull my stencil away. I'm just going to set it down. Oops, I didn't get the whole area, but I'll let this develop and show you. Because when it ends up, it's going to look like this. Oh, I can get goodness. all the different areas where my stencil was will be turned completely white. And I can see now that this is turning dark or this brown. It's turning brown. Right, Not and I white. have to wait a few minutes until it all completely turns brown. And then we'll dip it in the developer. But while we're waiting for a sec, I'll show you another way to apply the bleach. And that is more, let's pretend these were your denim jeans and you want to distress them, you know, uh -huh. or give it that washed out look. Right. Go ahead and paint some water or, or spray water and get your Levi's kind of wet so it's all, or your jeans kind of wet so it's all around there. Help ya. And take your brush. And this just gives it a soft blushy. Yep, just kind of a worn soft. Worn out on the knees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take some of that out and just kind of give it the, it'll give it a worn out look. See, they're being real strategic about where they place those on these jeans yeah. now. And so now just leave that set for a few minutes. Let's look at our first one. I think it's probably dry. And take it and it's completely turned brown. So since it's turned brown, it means the bleach has had enough time to work on there. And I simply just scrunch it in here and just twirl that around and squeeze the SX, excess water out of there for me. It's already white. Oh, it already worked. Oh, I love it. What a great technique. And so that area is already white. This is almost ready, so, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that is so cool. We have to make sure you get the bleach in the whole stencil area, but that would have been nice. Now, this another. Is that ready? Almost. I'd okay. say a few more seconds. Oh, and we have denims that are all colors. It's the new trend. And so we used to only be able to find denim that was indigo, and now you can find it in a lot of great, beautiful colors. And to do the color, I'm going to show you a different style. So look at the quilt on the wall. And you see all the feather quilting on there? Yes. And the yes. inside is white. And they did that with this bleach too. Can you imagine oh, how beautiful how it is? Oh, It'd be elegant. nice on the long arm if you were to quilt big feathers yes. and then just uh, fill that in. So I've taken my brush. And at this, I would probably want to work with a little bit of a smaller brush. My brush is kind of big. I have too much bleach in there. So work with a smaller, delicate brush and brush around the area. Here, I've got it brush around the area, the feathers, or whatever area you want to distress, and... and that blushier look, that comes from blending the, it with water a little. The bleach turns purple. Mm -hmm. And so you just fill in the areas you want. And let's wash this and see what this is going to be. Oh, I'm so glad you could be helping me. Has it started to develop an apple? Just a tiny bit. It's just a blush of white. It's just it's a tiny blush, see isn't the it? Camera see, that was from putting water on it first. So we'll just get a little, oh yeah, that's See, nice. it has that worn out look like the jeans. Just a tiny bit, right. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for helping me. And thank you all for joining us today on Quilt Central. Next week, we're going to paint on our quilts and show painting styles. Right, and we'll see you next time on Quilt Central. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. The jacket is absolutely beautiful. 
and Ivy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, one more time. I'll get it this time. You're, you're going to send me the, a tape that has yeah, bloopers right. on, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've been stacking them up. Okay. The jacket is absolutely. <sighs> All right, keep going. <laughs> I have a hair going in my mouth the whole time I was talking. Could you see it? Quilt Central is made possible in part by Genomi America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 Quilting Machines, Precision Quilting Machines, A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company, Krause Publications, Millican & Company, The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Now you can celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free 1-866-PADUCA or 1-866-723-8224.